I don't need to be recording separately, right? Yeah. Make sure to hit record. Hello! Up. Shut the fuck up, both of you. <laughs> you ruin it every time. And every time I think, I think, I think these people can handle the responsibility of shutting the fuck up. But no. I just want to be clear. This is on you because before you were so disorganized that you would start the stream and then you would be like 15 seconds and you'd be like, okay, I'm going to press record now. Now we're starting. But now you're organized. So you cut and start the podcast at the exact same second. And that it's just it's it's too much for me to handle. I apologize. Thank you. Apology accepted, Captain Nita. Um, folks, we are. It was a Star Wars reference. Um, we are local chat. It's episode 70. Man, I had a whole bit and everything, uh, but you ruined it. Mm. Uh, it's probably not mm. very good. Uh, anyway, joining us. Show again? Yeah, let's start it up. Let's start it up again. Play that five minute intro one more time. <laughs> Hello, everyone, and welcome to Local Chat. It's episode 70, and that means it's time to retire. This is worse than the first It wasn't the, the bit one. either. Folks, uh, we're here to talk about video games. We're here to talk all sorts of stuff. First of all, Amanda needs no introduction. And also joining us is Zach from Save Data. Hey, what's up, everybody? Hey, folks, we're it's here. It's a cousin Vinny. Yeah. Hey, you got <laughs> no, one. That's it. Nico, my cousin. Ah, Nico. Grand Theft Auto 4. Let's ah. go bowling. It was okay. It was just a um, little annoying. You know your girlfriend stalks you in that game if you start dating other women? The, like, Katie NPC. Oh, you can, like, I see outside of other buildings when you're on dates. Sorry. Isn't that terrifying? I'm sorry. I thought you were saying Zach's girlfriend, and I was, yeah, like, I was like, I was like, really surprised he was no, getting laid. I don't, I, <laughs> I'm so. Are you Ian? No, Ian? let me add some context. Let me add some Ian's context. Ian's gonna come like, at me with this heat at the start of this show. I feel like the last time you were on the show, you mentioned having a bad breakup recently. So I was surprised in terms of like good for How him. How long ago was that? I don't know, man. <laughs> Please tell How's us the intimate going? details of your relationship, Zach. <laughs> I'm, yeah. My life is great right now. I'll have you know. <laughs> She's <laughs> under the desk right now. <laughs> <laughs> Say hello, honey. Oh, she, oh, she hit her head. I'm so sorry. Oh, God. Oh. Hello. <laughs> Anyways, it's, it's this bitty. sucks. <laughs> this sucks. Let's, you know what? We'll play the music one more time. This time we'll get it. One more time. This time we'll get it. One more time. It's actually funny. <laughs> Hey there, everybody. Welcome to the Pirates of the Caribbean fan cast. We are here with our oh. very special guest, Zach from Save Data. Uh, I love regular, Pirates of the Caribbean. <laughs> regular pirate head, if I knew one myself. Also joining us, Rear Admiral Ian Gibson. Uh, Arr! Arr! the poop bad, deck. Arr. Folks, you gotta start believing in podcasts. You're listening to one. Uh. Oh, uh, folks, we're going to talk about oh, video games. It's episode 70, please. This is the worst dream I've ever had. Oh, can I talk no. about dreams? <laughs> oh, guys, I woke up in the middle of the night. And at the end of my bed, I thought like a wolf or a fox or something was crawling up onto the bed. And I, okay. I shook Karen awake. I don't know. And I said, Karen, I, we have to run. And I ran. I <laughs> In real booked, life? Yes. I booked it. So, so this fucking office Duran, Duran is song? all the way to the other uh, other side of the house. I booked it to the doorway. Oh my God. And I'm standing at the doorway, staring into the bedroom, waiting for her because she's going to get attacked by a wolf. And, <laughs> and I'm standing there. And as I'm standing there, my brain is waking up finally. And mm -hmm. my brain... I just go, what am I doing? And so I like, I cautiously walk back to the bedroom in case maybe I'm right. Oh my God. And then I like get back into bed and I was just like, Karen. And she was like, what? I was like, oh, I didn't know if I actually woke you up or made that up too. Anyways, I was like, told her the whole thing. And she thought I said I had to poop and I ran to the bathroom to poop. And she couldn't stop laughing because she thought I saw a wolf. Uh, and I, I legit oh booked God. it. Uh, that's crazy. Getting <laughs> all yeah. the way out of bed. That's crazy. <laughs> now, uh, th I think this story is wrapping up. Do you want to start it one more time? 
<laughs> hey there, everybody. Welcome to the podcast. It's Local Chat, episode 70. Shut the fuck up. Here's what we've been playing. It's all sorts of great things. Uh, folks, I've been playing Bug Snacks. It's a video game. It just hit game We're talking pass. about Bug Snacks? Um, hey, bug so snacks, I, I beat baby. it. I beat it. Oh, um, wow. I, bug Snacks sucks. Yeah, it's not. It's, it's not, not wait, good. Wait you can't say sucks. It's not a good video game. I would. I wouldn't say that. I would say it is a good video game. No, it is a solid five out of ten. What? Um, it. I would. I would. I would hesitantly give it a six. But yeah, it's, it it's has very all lukewarm. Flash and no unflash. Whatever the other thing I, is. I feel like just to contribute here. I feel like it is. It is a soft seven, but on like a proper rating scale, no, not like an is, IGN scale. It is, no, 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 no. no. I, I'm no, giving it a seven on an IGN scale. No, is what I'm it saying. is a rock I, hard five. What is, what is your problem with this game? I, I'm not saying the game's flawless, but first of all, looks like boring. crap. I'm going to be honest. Eh, it's For a, a, yeah, a game with a all little, that marketing it's behind it, it's, the textures aren't great. Second, animation on that side. The graphical front, not great. Okay. Secondly, the mechanics for catching bug snacks are bad. None of them work well. And every time I catch a bug snack or try to catch a bug snack, I don't know if I'm doing it right or I'm just cheesing it enough to catch a bug snack. I I disagree with that. I like I don't think the mechanics feel good, but I think the like puzzle aspect of it in a way in which each one has, you know, like a little bit of a uniqueness to it in the catch mechanic and you've got to do certain stuff to get it there. I think that's that's enjoyable. Yeah, I just feel like half the time I'm leading like creatures half a mile to do something to like have them not be on fire anymore. And then they blow up. I think I think to Ian's point. Trapping them is meant to feel enjoyable, but a lot of the times it's just like, oh god, this is just I know and what I'm supposed like, to do, but sometimes it's it's uh, frustrating to to get the puzzle to work. like like once you solve a puzzle mentally, it shouldn't be right like another five minutes of like okay, f- Bergy, Ber- what is his name? Uh, oh, Bunger, Bunger, get in the Bunger. fucking spot. Do the thing, Bunger. What the fuck? And it's just like, he's just like, Bunger, 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 Bunger. And it's like, I, like I set up a I thing Bunger, but. that I sh- thought should work. And then like the creature kept, so like I, it was a flying guy. And then I made the ground trap. And then I threw chocolate on the ground trap. And the flying guy would come in and he would hit the trap and then immediately go back and then see the chocolate come back in, hit the trap, immediately go back. But there was a half a second every time he hit the trap that the trap would go, spring me, I'm ready, I'll catch this Mm -hmm. guy. And he just kept hitting the top of the trap and going back and would never stop. And I'm like, is this how I'm supposed to catch you? Because I tried launching the trap to catch him and that never worked. So I'm like, is this the way I'm supposed to catch you? And then, I don't know, it's just... And so catching the bug snacks, not fun. Uh, also, yeah. runs like absolute garbage can on the Xbox Series X. It's like See, that's oh, interesting because really? I played it when it when it launched on PlayStation Five, and I was yeah. like, oh, this is fine. But like, yeah, I think it was like it was like it was like thirty frames per second, but it wasn't demanding. It wasn't like chunky anywhere or anything. It's like, like that. Yeah. it's probably a thirty to sixty normally, and then. When you go into Snacksburg or anywhere with more than like two bug snacks, it's like a solid four. No what? way. Um, that's, that's, that's the next. That's crazy. I feel like yeah. that's a port problem. That's yeah, it could crazy. Be a problem. It's like, I mean, it's not it's not that forever, but it's like and it's just like oh, yeah, yeah. catches up with it. Uh, I thought the writing was cool. I like all the characters. I thought they were very well written. The um, the names of the characters are ten out of ten. I will give yeah, them that. Like yes. that's the five points right there. Yeah. The five Their out of relationships. <laughs> I, I yeah. just remember they do they do the whole remember that end ending mission where or towards the end where you have to go find everybody and get them to the campfire and they all start singing and dancing? That's seven points right there, as far as I'm concerned. Yeah, it's a solid seven minus two points right there. Uh yeah. and like that's fun. The characters are cool. I thought Lisbert and the Agabel like mystery thing was really stupid. 
Um, I thought it could have been better. Also, people really hyped up, uh, and this isn't on the game, but people really hyped up that ending as being like crazy. And it, it, it was it like uh, it, it was it's a bit of a right turn. But yeah, it, yeah, it was it, a turn. That's for yeah. damn sure. <laughs> it's a turn, but it's not like like people were saying like, "How can you ever go back to Bug Snacks? How can you play the DLC knowing how the first one ended and how like messed up that was?" And I was like, "Not really." You know, it's, it's not like yeah. we're talking about Bug Snacks here. Like we're talking about Bug Snacks. You know. Yeah. So, and I thought like I get it, but also I feel like the that ending reveal didn't like you go back and replay it, and I'm not sitting there thinking like. Oh, look at these super hyper intelligent bug snacks trying to lure me. Like they're not. Yeah, yeah. yeah. It's like doesn't play into it very well. Um, it's it's. I, I agree 100 percent with you, Will. I I think it. Yeah, it's like a five out of ten game that was marketed extremely well. Extremely well. Like, and also that Kara Kara Benino song fucking slaps. Oh yeah, everything around it is undeniably. Awesome. It has I great think for me style. Yeah, I think for me, it's it's a game of extremes. Like some things work really, really well, like like music, the writing, the uh, the crazy bug snack designs, etc. Yeah. And then some stuff just doesn't really work that well, like like that whole ending sequence where you're going around doing the different mechanics in the town under siege. I feel like sucked. that whole sequence just didn't feel good at all. It sucked. Uh, now, if they, if they follow this up, if they follow this up with a bug snacks Pokemon style game, fucking sign me up. I'm there. Yeah, I could see that. I haven't. Let me, let me, the let me Isle raise of Bun- my bunger. <laughs> raise my bunger. Let him evolve into a cheese bunger or a bacon. Yeah, cheese that's bunger. what I'm fucking saying. A bunganator. Um, oh, that's good. I um I uh, the DLC's out, but I I didn't. I was I was I'm done. I'm done with that game. Um, yeah, there were like yeah, new yeah. mechanics and stuff, and I was like, ah, I don't want to learn anything. I didn't. But like they're it. big snacks now, Will. Oh, Mothra. Um. Yeah, also it's just a weird game to have DLC to go back to with the ending. Like you you start the DLC before the ending, they like uh interrupt you and like make you go uh, play it. But it's just oh. like knowing what happens, it's yeah, kind of like, like that. Uh. And also like I wanted the mystery to be cooler and I wanted to like solve thing. I don't know. It's just I'm trying to think of what I wanted out of it and I wanted a different video game. Um it, yeah, it just felt like too many games trying to be one thing. Uh, with a very well well executed uh, style behind it, but anyways, mm. I played Bug Snacks. I beat it. Um, I uninstalled it. Uh, and then the only other thing I've been playing, uh, we've been playing Hell Let Loose. And then uh, Deep Rock Season Two is on uh, the consoles today. I loaded it up quick just to look at like the the um, cosmetic tree that you earn in game. Uh, their new frameworks and skins are like make everything kind of look like nerf guns which is really cool it's like yellow with the orange and like blue Mm. purple highlights uh so i'm gonna probably play that this weekend a bunch but that's all i've been playing uh ian gibson (laughs) what have you been playing i am currently playing melvor idol I am. I talked about this game last week. This is the old school RuneScape based idle incremental game. Oh um, yeah, the one that Zach got me involved in. You um, said like you you said it on the stream that I got you involved in this, and I was like, I you have to be making this up because surely I would have <laughs> never talked about this game. No, I, I don't even know what this game is. No, it's funny because it what up. happened was when the game came out like six or nine months ago, you came into our Discord and posted it. And it was an article saying like this idle game is based off of RuneScape and has like RuneScape's permission, basically. Maybe and I you posted like, it to make fun of Chris. That had to be the reason. Well, I think you did. And then I was like, that looks cool. And you're like, oh, sorry, I meant to post that in the save data Discord because y'all oh, kind of yeah, yeah, RuneScape yeah. over there. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah, yeah. But it looked that cool. And I like so I put on my wish list and I finally bought it a week or two ago. And um, I am now firmly in the abusive part of my relationship with this game mm. where I give this game so much time and attention and I am getting almost nothing in return it's it's like my dealer is giving me 90 percent baby powder you know but i'm still paying for it you know 100 percent baby powder yeah yeah i gotta have have that that gerber you know (laughs) i'm sorry sir there seems to be a little bit of cocaine in my baby powder (laughs) 
yeah. It's just weird. It's like I feel like I'm I'm understanding the systems of this game more, but really the way the systems work is like you have to pick something. You have to sit there and do it for I don't want to say sit there and do it. You have to let it do it for six hours and then come over and flip to a different task and do that for six hours. So there's just not enough interactivity in it. And they've, like I said last week, they throw too many mechanics at you. So it, it took me like a week to get used to it and to understand, oh, I should be focusing my time here first and not over here. Mm-hmm. And here's a good way to get money. And so it's, uh, it sounds like that being said, yeah, I'm still playing it. I'm still playing it. It's, mm-hmm. it's weird though. Like there's so much in this game but they're missing like a lot of the core incremental stuff. Like I feel like, for example, one of the things that a good incremental game has is you should always make more or be more profitable when you are in the game yourself versus the game running for you. And I think the best way, the games that do that the best are like, for example, let's say like literally a clicker game where it's like, hey, you have this thing and it lets you click once every second, okay? But if you have the game open, you could just sit there and mash the click button as fast as you can and get more money faster. This Mm -hmm. game doesn't have that. It doesn't really have this. Like the only reason why you would have the game open is there are some things like combat or fishing, et cetera, that you kind of want to monitor closely to make sure something doesn't go wrong. But there's very little reason for you to be actively in this game. And honestly, that sucks because I I always like the idea of I'm making progress when I'm not playing it. And every now and then I come in there and I make a shitload of progress just wasting some time in it, you know? And that doesn't have this. And then I think the other thing is like, so you can pick one of these skills. So for example, right now I am fishing and I said fish for this type of fish and it's just fishing away, but there's nothing you can really do in the background simultaneously. You know, if you think about like other, like, like cookie clickers, Mm -hmm. like in cookie clicker, Mm -hmm. other things where it's like, Hey, I'm going to set up a factory. So now my factory is making cookies, but at the same time I can click over here or now I, now I have two types of factories and they're both making cookies at the same time. This is not, you pick one skill or activity and it's going, that's your main skill or activity. It's going, the only caveat to that is you can have farming in the background. So every couple hours and you plant seeds and you come back a couple hours later and you harvest it, but you can only have one active skill. And as far as I can tell, there's no like bot or follower system where at some point I can say, Hey, I, I bought a a fisherman and now he fishes in the background for me while I can also cut wood. It's, it's single threaded and that sucks for an idle game, you know? Like it feels like they thought that instead of there being progress in terms of you are making an engine that gets you uh, towards the end where you're doing multiple things at once and you're getting a whole bunch of things, it's instead just a whole bunch of skills for you to level one by one and they kind of support each other. Now, counterpoint to that, Ian? Yeah, Have you off. thought about playing a different <laughs> video game? I hear it sounds you. like you don't like this video game. <laughs> You've been playing for two it. weeks now, maybe, maybe more. I should, maybe I should play Bug Snacks, but that's the thing. Like idle incremental, that's my Achilles heel. Like it just has to be just good enough. Just give me a little taster, a little, little, you know, on the gums right there, and baby, a I'm little, playing little it. put a little bunger in my mouth, and then you know exactly, you know. And so it's that's enough about Melvor Idol. I don't know. I'll give you another update next week. Uh, you know, Ian, the, the, the talk about what you've been playing section is usually just for games that are kind of new and you don't talk about all the time. I honestly, though, I'm just going to skip over this joke. This has made me like really think about game design of incremental games because it's weird. Like when you think about the original incremental game, cow clicker by Ian, the ghost, it's like, it's one of those things you don't know about that story uh, yes. no, i'm just laughing because both me and will were like okay sure no, i mean you of course know about the chateau 87 no literally the first incremental game was cow clicker and it, it was this it was this, it was an academic it was like a game critic we're in the league of Eden's. <laughs> and he was like and he was like these Facebook games are so stupid. I can make the stupidest game ever. And it's called cow clicker. And you literally just come in, you click this cow and it makes a number go up Mm -hmm. and it became huge on Facebook. Like, like it got huge on Facebook and he's like, no, this is a game that you're supposed to hate because it's like, it's It's tied to this. It's like, and, and it became huge. And then, People were like, hey, this is fun, but what if I put some mechanics on it? What if you're making cookies, et cetera, things like that? Yeah, I mean, Cookie Clicker, I feel like, was the one in my head that I was like, that was the first one to blow yeah, up. Or but. like the fair. Exactly, yeah. So so it's just, this is a good exercise where even though I don't like this game, they're doing enough different things with incremental games that it has like my game design part of my brain going where I'm like, what's working here, what's not, and why is it working or not working? Um, 
I for a little bit there for like an hour, I was like, I should just make my own clicker game. And I did. It's actually really easy with HTML and JavaScript to just make your own clicker game. And it took me like an hour to throw one together. That was literally just a clicker. I'm too lazy to actually go down that path. But it, mm. but this I bring this up because it's a fun exercise in like, I love this genre. I know it's my Achilles heel, but now I'm kind of diving into the nitty gritty of like what actually works. What little mechanical tweaks can you do to make it better or worse? Mm, mm, Is that okay, mm, Will? Is that your permission to talk about it? You piece of shit. Yeah. Yeah, that's fine. Is this Anyways, the, uh... the other game, man, I we've only played like an hour or two of it the last week, but honestly, I'm itching, baby. I really want to play some more Hell Let Loose. Zach, would you know anything about Hell Let Loose? Uh, I think I tuned in for like a few minutes during one of your streams. It, yeah, y'all just seemed like you were getting mad. It just seemed like a literally yeah. any other like Battlefield-esque game where you die very quickly. Eh, uh, it's... Again, I, I don't I tune in for a very brief yeah, period yeah, yeah. of time, but it looked like you was like, God fucking damn it. He was on the roof. Like I, t and you were like, I yeah. tell the guys on the roof. And there's like, Oh, he's fucking dead too. And I was like, okay, well, yeah. So a quick, a quick recap on what makes hell let loose special. It's part of this, like, like tactical Milsim multiplayer genre that has like project reality squad, hell let loose, um, and, and Arma to a small extent where it is multiplayer game, kind of like Battlefield, but the way they've tweaked the mechanics is that your life matters because the maps are larger and it's usually a longer time between combat and the engagement distance is much longer and things that are more deadly than you, like tanks or snipers or artillery, are infinitely more deadly than they would be in a battlefield game. Um, and then they also really break down communication. So, for example, if you're a grunt, you can only ping. You can just say, hey, look over here, and it pops it for five seconds. And you can only talk to your squad or your squad lead. But if you're a squad oh, okay. leader, then you're an officer, so you can start putting a whole bunch of different pings down. And you can be like, enemy tank here, and your squad sees it. But then all the other squad leaders see it. And you can talk on the command radio to other squad leaders and to okay. the commander. So it's really about like small group tactics. You're not just like a grunt being thrown into a meat grinder. See, I, I, um, shit like that, games that, that mess with communication and how you do that, like that, I, I do love. Yeah. Uh, nobody fucking knows this game, but Chrome Hounds was like the fucking yeah. banger shit on that. And that that has me interested. Literally everything else you said about this game before that point, I was like, wow, this sounds like I would I would rather drink bleach than play that game. No, so like normally I would say yes, but but it's it definitely requires a little bit of buy in, like almost a little bit of role play where you're like, I am a grunt. Okay. I, need I do like squad. that. I need to stick with my squad. I need to listen to my, my, what my squad leader says. And mm -hmm. part of it's like he literally has more information than me and he's getting orders from the commander of the team who has tools and can see everybody and is giving orders. But also part of it is like, I know this is not going to be as much fun if I'm running around by myself. I'm going to get lost. I'm going to get swamped. I'm not going to know what's going on. But if I stick with my squad mates, like even when it's just Will and I playing, we're like, okay, let's clear this house. I've got the right side. I've got the left side. And you're doing like tactical clears or you're like covering each other as you're crossing the road. We had this really cool segment on the stream on Tuesday where there was a squad. We There's about four of us. It was me, Will, and the other Zach, plus a rando. And we were defending these woods, and the enemy, we noticed they're starting to come at us from across this field. We can see them coming. They're 150 meters away. They haven't seen us yet, and we're like, we actually got to turn around and go like 500 meters back because we got to defend this other objective. But we don't want to get shot. So we were doing bounding cover where basically like one person is like, I am covering, I am looking in the direction of the enemy and everybody else is running past him. And then they turn around and cover. And we were like calling that out. Like I'm moving, move. Okay. I've got you covered. You can move now. And it just, there was no combat in that, but it felt that teamwork felt so good. And that's what makes that genre of like hell at loose squad project reality. So good is that it's not just a multiplayer shooter, meat grinder, teabag you type of game. It, it literally requires that teamwork for you to be any sort of effective. And it feels fantastic, especially with randoms. It's, uh, my, it's um, my, my question is, is do you, if you die, you, you just have to sit there and watch the rest of the match? No, no. You, so the respawn, respawn times are about 30 seconds. But, but the oh, other okay, thing is great. the spawn points are determined by your squad leader. So if your squad leader is doing a good job, then he is putting down spawn points, not just for you, oh. but also for the, for the rest of your team. And there's certain rules about how close you can place them to each other. So as a squad lead, like one of your main things is like, I always need an outpost down, which is a little radio so that my squad can respawn here. And I have to protect that. If the enemy finds it, it gets destroyed and we're going to have to walk five fucking minutes to get back to the front line. 
So it's like, it's like self-defined spawn points. And that's part of like the teamwork also is that you're trying to put up garrisons, which are spawn points that your entire team can spawn at and not just your squad. So you put those strategically so that you're, you're near a point, but they're also defended. So you're not overrun by the enemy. So it's, it's, it's not super, super punishing yeah. as long as your team is, is working somewhat together. And there's like artillery hmm. and people sell or player tanks. driven supply trucks and tanks. And like you yeah. need supplies to put garrisons up. You need supplies to put like fencing and sandbags and defense stuff if you're trying to defend barbed point, wire so. and stuff. Yeah, uh, now, now it sounds too complicated. I actually, I'm actually out again. It's. Uh, out. I will he's say <laughs> the the nice thing about the command structure is that a lot, like if you want to put up sandbags and stuff, you have to be an engineer. So if you just want to have a fucking rifle and shoot at people, just pick rifleman. You can play yeah. that game as simple or as complicated as you want. Mm. Like I do medic because it's fun to revive people, and I like to role play and give people a little kiss when I uh, revive them. And everyone's mm, and mm, pretty much mm. everyone's on voice chat. Uh, most servers yeah. require squad leaders to be on voice chat and commanders, but most like players are in their squads on squad chat so yeah uh, with with proximity voip so yeah. you can like a lot of times like i'll be shooting at a guy and, and somebody on a different squad comes running up to me and i'll be like hey hey there's a guy 100 meters front watch out watch out and then like we'll join in together briefly and shoot him out but because i have voice chat we're like you're able to yell at somebody like that and be like hey enemy over here mm. and yeah. people yeah. people don't use discord to just completely break this game we use discord but mostly because we're on stream but you can still talk yeah. our game while we use Discord. Yeah. Right. right, right. Of, like 99% of the people on the server are using the VoIP in the server. Okay. Yeah. It's pretty good. Uh, yeah. I, I like Hell at Loose. It's fun. Uh, and I'm excited to play it again. And please don't arrest me. Uh, <laughs> moving on, Zach, you have uh, in this document. Uh, you know, admitted- I, I, I listen. I, I said that I have not really played a video game in two weeks. Uh, I, I realize I have I have played a game. Uh, Malvor, using, Malvor Idol? Is, Kingdom no. Hearts Pirates of the Caribbean? No, uh, I know. Uh, I have played... It's on your phones, folks. It's not words. Instead of words, it's not words. <gasps> oh, Just kidding. Yeah. It's not words. It's spelled K-N-O-T words. What it, uh, it's got not it, in his phone. Yeah. It's a... Uh, you know what? I was about to say, Ian, you probably like it, but I don't... I feel like any <laughs> game I expect can you I, to can like... I, can I ask a question You change your mind on... Is this the one where it looks like a block of tiles, like a Scrabble game, and you have to kind of figure out the words that are all knotted together in like a Scrabble? Yeah, yeah. Okay, that's cool. Uh, it's it's pretty fun. Uh, the uh, it it does a pretty good monetization model too, where you can play a lot for free. It definitely in the little bit that I play, usually like at night before I'm going to bed, like I'll have something on TV, and I'm just like, oh, let me do a couple words or a couple puzzles. Uh, you, you can get a year's worth for, I think it's like four, $4. And I'm like, that's pretty tempting, wow. honestly. Uh, and it, yeah, it, it, it literally is just, yeah. Like you said, it, it looks like a Scrabble board or, or it looks like a crossword kind of, or like empty Scrabble board, but it has the tiles put in and it's like, Oh, it, it mixes Sudoku kind of where it's like, here's three blocks that aren't in a line, but they're next to each mm-hmm. other. And it's like, it can be an S, you can have an O, or you can have a T. And it's like, what order do you put them in? And you usually start with the two-letter words, and then you kind of go bigger. Or if there's something that ends with an S, it's almost always going to be an S because that's the easiest way for the game to make words longer. Stuff like that. Yeah. Um, but it's it's honestly, it's pretty fun. Some of the harder levels are buck wild. Uh, and it does, it does a cool thing where like you can get a hint, and mm-hmm. you get three hints per level. And obviously, it like docks your score if you if you use the hints. But uh they instead of like telling you what the word is or giving you some of the letters they they give you like the crossword answer for what that word would be oh of like plural noun so and so does the like blanking blanky blank and you're like oh shit uh okay it's probably this and then you usually solve it but it, it, it's nice that it doesn't just like give it to you which is is interesting it's yeah, fun they were, i recommend um, checking them out next if, if you're tired if you're tired of wordle i i, I recommend it and uh, Josh Wardle promoted it or promoted it. Uh, he tweeted Josh about Wardle. it and said it was really good. Wardle. Y'all still, y'all still um, playing Wardle? No. No, I lost my 70 day streak and uh, I didn't, pl- don't play it anymore. <laughs> I had, I had a 99 day streak and then I knew I was going to lose the streak when I went on the cruise, but I lost the streak the day before I went on the cruise. Oh, that Damn. feels fucking bad. And then after that, I, and then after that, I was just like, nah. 
I've been trying to find another word game, so maybe I'll play uh, not words. It's good. Yeah, I, I, it's, I do recommend it. It's by Zach Gage, who made Type Shift and Spell Tower. Yes. Yes. And oh, okay. Games. I was trying to remember a lot of word games. Was, yeah. Mm-hmm. Um, it's very good. Sweet. I want to check it out. I think they were also saying you can do the yearly or whatever thing for four dollars, or you can buy everything for twelve. Yeah, you 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 can do yearly for four, and then it's you can buy in like for I guess. Yeah, it's like for for a lifetime for twelve dollars, and I was like, "What are the fucking odds I'm playing this game in three years from now?" So I'm like, Ugh. "Yeah, that's true." Like, How, real quick, is this? I mean, I'm guessing this is not a daily game like Wordle. Like, what's what's the puzzle? So they here? so they do actually have a daily that comes up every day, and usually Mondays are super easy, and Sundays are like fuck you hard. So it gets okay. progressively harder through the week. But every month they also have, I think, sixty additional ones that they put out for like oh here's the one for for april or may but you get 10 of them for free and then you get every daily for free okay because i was just thinking this sounds like it would be a great airplane game yeah if i just wait a bit and then like 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 let's say it's been running for two months does that mean if i log in i can theoretically buy 120 no so you only get the archive of past ones if you buy for it but otherwise at mo- like if yeah. you're playing on a sunday you'll have 17 puzzles to do because you'll have the 10 free for the month and then you'll have the seven free for the week. But then as soon as Monday hits, it resets. And as soon as the month hits, those 10 reset as well. But if I pay, I get all the archive ones as well. Correct. Okay. Yeah, I may just have to drop some money on this in a couple months. Honestly, I've played like maybe an hour of it over the past week of just like having Mm -hmm. some video essay on as I slowly drift off and like doing something. But it, it... it's pretty good. I recommend it. I my favorite plane activity was playing Konami Pit Cross while listening to podcasts. <laughs> well, what came to your mind for that? Because I, I, I was like, oh, what joke am I gonna say? <laughs> oh, oh that's God. good. That's good. <laughs> but ever since they banned them from flights, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> uh, it was around January seventh when I got banned. So I oh really oh since no, then. <laughs> no. <laughs> <laughs> no, but seriously though, K- Konami Pit Cross plus uh, Mission to Zix, that podcasting oh, game in particular, good. man. Because because what happened was we went to Iceland and Will got me hooked on Mission to Zix, and then when we left Iceland, we had like the seven hour flight from Iceland, and then I had three trips to Canada in the next three weeks. And so I was on oh planes God. for like 30 hours that month. And it was just constantly just Konami Pit Cross and podcast. It was fantastic. Pit Cross yeah. is good. I Konami love Pit, Pit Cross was my commute for two years. So uh, good. And I, so good. I beat I beat it one and a half times. Yeah, um, I think I think I've burned like three or four like full Pit Cross app games, like just going through yeah. everything on them. I'm like, I got to get more Pit Cross like. I've been playing Man. the the, Con- the 3DS ones. They're pretty good. Yeah. Konami Pit Cross, though, like I didn't know that was kind of my first Pit Cross game. I didn't know how good I had it because it felt like it felt like they had it perfectly. Where there was, I feel like there was no puzzles in there where you had to just randomly guess. Like you always had at least enough information to do one more thing and to carry you through the puzzle. And there's some Pit Cross apps where like you open uh, a puzzle within five moves, you're just like, nope, you gotta start guessing, and it's like. Fuck you, man. That's not a puzzle. You yeah, I, I uh, the quality shift in different Picross apps is really funny to see. I'm like, yeah. oh, this is a dog shit one. Yeah, a little like, mechanics. Oh, like, like this one isn't even translated well. Okay, yeah. like <laughs> I can't even drag. I have to individually click. It's oh, like, the it, it, it does kill me too when they like try to make it like part of a bigger puzzle, and it's like oh, this is supposed to be a, a, a bird, this specific box. Yeah. And you do it and like you, you, you're you at the last square and you're like, what the fuck even is this? And you hit it and like it colors in. You're like, that wasn't, I'm sorry. No. That was not what I just solved. Like, no, 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 or no, no, no. Or it's the part of the picture where there's only like three dots out of the whole thing. So you're just like, cool. Great. I have no information <laughs> they go off of here. Mm. Yeah. It's Orion again. <laughs> anyway, give, give me a pit cross idol game and oh my god How would that, oh boy um okay? oh, folks those are the I games we have been playing which means it's time to head on to the news section hold on uh-oh play it quick real quick play I think it. it's time to do a live live rendition should i just mute him <laughs> <laughs> i would cry oh it's uh, so good zach it's great keep going yeah keep I hate going you so much is that I your spatoonian do you want this? Do you want this in a? 
What the fuck? Uh, do you want this in one take or? Uh... No, real quick. While you're deciding that, <laughs> I was at deciding the liquor store. It. I was at the liquor store the other day looking for one thing and one thing in particular: hard Mountain Dew. I can't find it anywhere, even when the website says it should be there. But I found this. It's three ninety nine. It's a black and tan slow brewed porter, and I didn't give a shit what it was. I just wanted the jar, and it turns out it's actually really good beer. It's called Mississippi Mud, and it comes in an actual like glass mini thing. It's awesome. I want to try that Mississippi this Mud. This episode of Local Chat brought to you yeah. by Mississippi Mud. Slurp, slurp, slurp. Get drunk, uh, folks. We're gonna head over to the news. So here's the news theme. Here's the news, it's gaming news We're talking about news What's up news But now there's more to the song So you can sing along It won't bore you though Unlike Factorio Kingdom Hearts was Ian, And he really loved Pirates of the Caribbean But I don't want to have a vocal spat So let's bring it back To your local chat Wow Wow. Incredible. Dang. He's literate, really folks. Good. Get fucking wrecked, Ian. Wow. That was like a solid five out of ten. That was a buck snacks. <laughs> yeah. I just look, I, there's one thing I feel obligated to point out. As soon as my first Kingdom Hearts 2 ended, uh-huh. I stopped making Pirates of the Caribbean jokes. Will is the only one making those now. I want to be very will, clear. Will and Halucha, let it be clear. I only That's make fair. them because That's of Halucha's fair. reactions. <laughs> But yeah. I, I should be honest. I'm not making them because I respect you in any way. It's because the joke's dead <laughs> as far as I'm concerned. So I appreciate uh, that. It's, <laughs> it's so funny because it's so not true. <laughs> <sighs> uh, anyways, folks, uh, top 10 answers on the board. Best video game world is what we're looking for. <laughs> Wait, what? <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> Family feuding over here. Uh, folks, time for the news. Oh. Uh, we should play the real news theme, though, right? Uh, Ian. What, you got to put something over that? No, I'm kidding. Ian, you put... I'm going to steal uh, that. That's the new one. Yeah, that's the new Sorry, one. Sorry. What? It was a what little blown out, me? and Ian made a gross noise during it, but... Uh, that's <laughs> why I was like, do you want a clean take? But <laughs> I did, until Ian made noise. No, I think um, Actually, honestly, I think it was good. I think it was only the first, like, second or two that was wonky that's it right just yeah. splice them together yeah i'll splice them it's together. i'm sure i'm sure it won't sound weird at all yeah oh no it, actually you know what should we pay for studio time for zach to go get that actually record it's probably what 100 no, bucks an hour for no, studio time it's super not worth it it's super I, not worth it mm, you have no idea i what, talk about it off money's not I worth that, anything those so lyrics that's... in less than five minutes uh what does your <laughs> channel make a lot of money like what no <laughs> Shut up, Ian. Whoa. <laughs> What's the secret? <laughs> this isn't coming from <laughs> having a real <laughs> job. <laughs> yeah, that do, that does help. Actually, That's, I'm not gonna lie. Does, yeah. We'll figure For, it out. I'll figure what that was like. Yeah. <laughs> out there in any town. Uh, folks, uh, time for the news. Ian, this first news uh, item you put here, I was very confused. Yeah. I, I mean, I think it's pretty self-explanatory. Uh, Apple Arcade has started promoting something called Warped Cart Racers, which is based off of a 20th century television animated series like American Dad and King of the Hill. So you can play as uh, Peter Griffin or Hank Hill or Stan, I think is his name, from uh, uh, American Dad. But it's just oh, kind yeah. of this weird little thing. Like, I forgot um, uh, Apple Arcade is out there, let alone that they're having special IP warped card racers out there. It's kind of weird. Genuinely, have, have either, either of y'all paid for Apple Apple Arcade? I I played for Google Play. I forget what they play pass, which was their <laughs> answer to Apple Arcade, because I don't have any Apple devices. Uh, and honestly, it's a it's a good deal. Some of the stuff on there is worth the price for three, four bucks a month. It kind of just depends on the library. Yeah, I mean, I, I did Apple Arcade's first month for free and then I totally forgot and let it roll over for two more months. But I was still playing it in that time period. And for five bucks a month, I was like, actually, some some pretty great games on here yeah uh, if you're in, if you're into mobile gaming it's a good deal uh, i don't know about even statue, if you're not, like uh, it's it's just like I, yeah. I i played it for like you know 10 minutes a day and i was like this is fucking great yeah i don't know about statue of limitations on this but i did the first month for free 
and I think my credit card was expired. So then oh, nice. they just kept asking every month for me to update my credit card information. But so I just used it for it. another they year. Never, they never and kicked then you? That's they, wild. I also never paid for it, so... I used Apple Arcade for a while. That they had that wow. really good one game with the cards in the mountain, and you're like a a guy who like the gem cards. Je- gem. Yeah, gem. yeah, I know. Oh, what you, yeah, oh, I know what you're about. that was gem that was my favorite one. Card uh, house. Lodestone. Lodestone. Jeremy, no, I, that was right. That was one I was jealous of because it was an Apple Arcade exclusive, so you couldn't play it anywhere else yeah, for. It was a while. really good. It was a good game. It I was sh- like grid based. Play that now. Uh, two seconds and I'll find it. Almost talking about something else. Uh, talk about Mario else. Kart Racing. Mario Kart. Silence, Hank Hill. Please. Silence. Uh, Kart Silence, of Darkness please. is really good. I feel like it was Lodestone. I don't think so. Lodestar? Lone Star? Grindstone. 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 Uh, my favorite <laughs> app and my favorite rock. They're minerals, Marie. <laughs> Grindstone. Nice. It's good. It's uh, a really good game. Topical. It gets it gets real fucky. A it bit did, later. yeah. It, oh, it feels like it, it feels like it was originally designed to have microtransactions, and then they were like, "Oh yeah. shit, we can't do that." But then, like, some of the I, levels are kind of unbalanced. I, I will say, uh, my one qualm with Apple Arcade, and I think Google Play Pass does this as well, is, oh. for example, I'm looking I'm looking at the Grindstone page right now. It's available on Nintendo Switch, Epic Game Store, and Apple Arcade, and uh-huh. that's it. So there's a little bit of platform exclusivity that are taking mobile games that probably would have been on both Android and Apple and now kind of excluding them to either platform. That's kind of my only rub with one of the with the idea of Apple Arcade is that that's fair. They're going to start to add some exclusivity with games that really should be on both mobile platforms. Totally. Yeah. But who really cares about people who use Androids? I don't. They're superior in every way. Anyways. Uh, did you actually uh, want to talk about this racing game or no? That was it. That's no, all. I, I think it was just a good stroll down Apple Arcade. Okay, memory lane. <laughs> uh, <clears throat> moving on. Uh, I'm gonna skip one for a second because the biggest news of the week is yeah. uh, Square Enix has um, mm-hmm. man, sold things to other people. No, Square Enix has sold Tomb Raider and Deus Ex Studios and the M- M- and the IP rights to the Embracer Group. They have been embraced um, consensually um, for a measly uh, public three hundred million dollars. Um, there was some financial uh, tomfoolery people were going through about how uh, they were at a loss with a lot of those studios and something else, and it was probably it'll mm-hmm. probably end up closer to 600 million costing them in total mm-hmm. for buying these uh ips um i'm excited because day deus ex uh i i know don't uh hurt me i've only played the two recent ones uh are two of my favorite games um and i just they already said they're working on a new one and i'm I, very excited uh, about that i honestly i i'm not sure that they said they're working on a new deus ex because i saw both i saw the article you linked but which which basically said during the shareholder announcement they said they're working on a new deus ex and then i saw a correction from a reporter on another article that said correction they did not announce a new deus ex well so I know, i'm not clear what's happening with that i knew they i know they that. announced I know. uh I, sorry i no, I, sorry. I know they announced that uh what's the other studio that that does tomb raider i uh, not Crystal IDOS, dynamics, Crystal dynamics. They announced that they're doing a Tomb Raider, but they also announced that like literally a month ago, which yeah. in retrospect feels like this was them trying to like boost the the value of these studios, despite yeah. the fact that I think we'll all agree they sold them for pretty cheap. <laughs> Very cheap. Because I mean, Embracer we bought, bought Gearbox. Embracer bought Gearbox for 1.3 billion. And it fucking blows my mind that it, that Gearbox is worth that much money to them. I, I just nobody man, likes I, Gearbox. Fuck Randy Pitchford. <laughs> H- hashtag pitchforks, pitchforks for Pitchford. That's all I'm saying. Um, no, I will say, Ian, I, I didn't think like someone came out and said it. I was mostly going off of them saying they wanted these uh, specific um, IPs to make more games. Is, yeah, is more I, of what I'm excited. But I get yeah, what you're I, I, don't, I don't think it's a crazy assumption. I just want to make it clear. 
I don't yeah, think it was no, confirmed or announced that there is a new Deus Ex game. Uh, yeah. I literally almost restarted or started playing uh, Human Revolution tonight, but I played. What did I play instead? Something. Oh, like a Star Wars. Like snacks. Uh, oh. No, actually, I started playing Arkham Knight and I didn't enjoy it. Um, yeah. So I yeah, think this Arkham is Knight's cool. not good. Yeah, yeah it's not. It's terrible. Uh, I think this it's is no cool. Snacks. Embracer taking it. I mean, it's a solid five out of ten. Uh, mm. This is cool that they're shedding some stuff and giving like Square Enix famously not giving people many chances or and also famously saying Tomb Raider was never a success to them, even though it did pretty well. Um, so hopefully these uh, developers here get out under from underneath that and can uh, really make it shine. I do, yeah. I do want to say my favorite piece of this entire thing is Square Enix said that they sold these studios to, quote, enable yeah. the launch yeah. of new businesses by moving forward with investments in fields, including blockchain, AI and the cloud. They are about to lose all 300 million they just got because that crypto bubble is going to burst. Now, now, Will, you're very smart. Ian, you're here. Uh, a lot of the speculation online is that this was them essentially freeing themselves of their Western studios to make themselves a bit more desirable, easier to acquire by somebody else. Uh, mm. One might, many people are predicting a Sony. Uh, which, hey, uh, Square Enix being acquired by Sony would would be pretty, I feel like, understandable by a lot of people. Yeah. How do y'all feel about that? I mean, the last time Square Enix was on the ropes, they made Final Fantasy. So maybe there's a really good game that's about to come out. I mean, Final Fantasy 16 is about to come out. So probably. Six I don't, times I, I can see that. seven remake part two will come out in two more years. Maybe I could see that. I, I I'm not sure that I buy it, but I also don't deny it. But companies definitely will start making some moves to make themselves more appealing if they think they're going to be uh, bought at some point in the future. Mm -hmm. um, so I, I could see this. I could see this happening. Yeah, I mean. I, I I think it will. I think Sony's going to try and buy somebody else big, and I think Ubisoft is kind of off the table at the moment. Uh, yeah, because they, they got that weird thing going on where they they, they want, don't want to get acquired, and it's like guys, well, no. Just, recently, they they didn't want to be acquired, but then recently there were rumors of them trying to sell, and now the rumor is that they're trying to find some some nice equity partner to actually have like a fifty fifty stake in the company. Across. Yeah, so it's which, weird. They're like they're like back out there. But now it's, they're looking for the right buyer. Or it's very weird. And uh, I mean, I don't want to get seg segue talking about Ubisoft for a while, but I just wish that Yves Gimmo would fucking give it up the company. Like he's made a billion, <laughs> like a made a billion dollars. I mean, like just, just take a rest. Yves. Yeah. Skull and Bones is about to come out. It's going to turn that's around. True, for that's true. He's got to stay around for that. So he can make Guys, the crazy ton of money. I mean, he's in the show. It did look kind of good. It looked kind of good. Honestly. The leak. Um, and good. I know you're excited. Oh, um, just wait till we see the show, Ian. The, sh the show's going to do way better. Yeah, the show's going to be I great. I can see that. I can see it's going to be the new Game of Thrones. Yeah, and Beyond Good and Evil 2. So excited. No, it's uh, coming out the demo for that is going to be in Skull and Bone. Uh, oh, that would be a good It's like move. a crackdown Halo situation. Yeah, yeah, yeah. A few people yeah. would actually buy it, though. Yeah, totally. Um, <laughs> we have another update. Speaking of a Prince of... Or no, speaking of Ubisoft, Prince of Tears, yeah. Um, Prince of Persia development ha was led uh, by uh, what oh, doesn't say here, so never mind. It was led uh, by Ubisoft, someone else. It was Pune. Oh, thank Poon. you. In Mumbai. And Mumbai. Yeah, yeah. It's real <laughs> unfortunate that the name is Pune or Poon, but <laughs> they just keep saying it. Yeah. Um, <laughs> and it's now being led by Ubisoft Montreal, um, the very birthplace of the Sands of Time trilogy. I feel like they were trying to do new things and then someone got pissed off. It was like, no, you can't this change the, the Sands of Time. The <laughs> this is a, a Metroid, for, Metroid Prime 4 situation where they were like, hey, let's get these studios in other countries to, to lead up this major, well, not ma either, for either of them, not really a major franchise, but like a franchise that, Fan, there there is a fan base for it was around let's have them do it yeah uh and then they were just like hey uh it's, it's just not coming together 
Um, I will say, as somebody who doesn't give a single shit about Prince of Persia, I haven't played any of the games, uh, this does interest me a little bit more because uh, Ubisoft Montreal won. Of course, they, they made the Sands of Time trilogy in the first place. But also, they're... Uh, they do um gosh what are they the 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 2d rayman games and apparently oh i didn't know this in another press release this is supposed to be a 2.5 3d 2.5 d game and i was like oh isn't that what the sands of time was i thought sands of time was a full 3d maybe i'm yeah sands of time was full 3d original prince of persia was yeah uh, i are you sure i thought sands of time was the very first prince of persia reboot I'll look it up. I'll look it up. Y'all keep talking. Oh, David in the chat saying that's Montpelier separate games. Oh, well. What? I might be wrong, but uh, if oh, that's it's the, the case, remake plus a different 2.5D game. Oh, okay. That makes a lot more sense. Because the well, original Prince I, of Persia is 2D. Uh, yeah. Either yes. way, this is good news for both of those projects. Because again, the people there, uh, of course, it's probably different teams at this point. It's been over a decade since the first Prince, Prince of Persia Sand of Time game came out. But uh, I'm sure there's a lot of DNA still there of understanding what that game should be. And then also the 2.5D game. I feel like they're going to fucking crush it. So, yeah. And, and you are correct. The Sands of Time 2010 game, maybe earlier than that. It was 3D. That was 3D. OK. OK, cool. But yeah, I, I feel like this is a win. I mean, I, I'm sure the the team at the teams at Ubisoft Mumbai and the other one, which I won't say again, uh, are bummed. And I'm sure Ubisoft is probably like, yo, we're losing money here. I don't know. Uh, but it is it is buck wild that this game has been in development for so long and we saw footage of it and they're just like, yeah, we're going to we're going to reboot the whole thing. <laughs> Might as well. Um, and it's a remake. It's a remake of a decade old game. So it's like, what's happening? I just find it hard to get excited about the Prince of Persia series. Like, I understand the original. Fantastic. I understand the reboot. But then it kind of just became a generic 3D action game when there was a lot of 3D action games out there. And there's still a decent amount of 3D action games out here, mm-hmm. even though they're turning more cinematic. So I, I just I don't really see how this is going to stand out. Yeah, I mean, I'm, I'm yeah, I just don't like play, sand no that it much. It's coarse and it's coarse. gets everywhere. Yeah. yeah. No, it's just like hot and like, I don't know. It's annoying. I don't go to the beach that often. I prefer pools. Uh, anyways, moving on. Uh, we have uh, Ian put this in here. I don't know what it means. It's oh, Microsoft it's, 3D Movie Maker. It's a feel good, fantastic story. Are you guys aware of Foon on Twitter? F O O N E, that user? What yes. did you just call me? Um, Fune. So Foon is basically like a, I don't know what he actually does, but he just, on Twitter, all he does is he just kind of picks up old technology and just, I don't want to say does weird things with it, but he like will take it apart and be like, oh, look at this really weird video card I found. It's weird because it has memory modules like this and not like that. And it's it's pretty interesting. And he'll do weird things like he'll find old games and try and rip the font out of that old game to then use it in other ways. Oh, I love you that. Guys have, I guarantee you guys have seen his work, though, because he blew up last year when he bought a pregnancy test from uh you know like a cvs writer or whatever and got doom running on the pregnancy oh, okay test, yeah, yeah, yeah on the digital pregnancy test it, and it was really funny because i i was following that thread before it blew up and he and he, at first he was like why does this pregnancy test have like a full like black and white lcd screen when literally all it's doing is just reading the strip that is in a non-digital <laughs> pregnancy test like there's nothing really digital about it and then he's like and then he started reverse engineering it and he's like, wait a minute, I can play video on this. So he played video of Doom. And then he was like, wait a minute, this thing, the chip in this is way too powerful for a pregnancy test. I can actually <laughs> run Doom on this. And then he got Doom running on it. Now, it how, did he, how did he control it? Did he did you have to pee on it to shoot or? Yeah. Yeah. Mm. You pee on it to shoot. You. I, I, I'm going to stop here. We're all really pregnancy real tests, Will. No, you put the baby on the pregnancy test to know what gender it is. <laughs> it's got, it, yeah. You poke Anyways. the baby with it, it'll tell you if you're pregnant or not. Yeah, blue blood boy, red blood girl. Yeah. <laughs> so, anyways, Foon, Foon has a following 
a little bit of a following in like like the retro gaming and software and hardware space. And he put out a tweet on April 6th, which just says, hey, at Microsoft, give me the source code to 3D Movie Maker. You released it in 1995 and I want to expand and extend it. My DMs are open. I'll help you open source it. And then somebody from Microsoft who worked on the original project came out on May 3rd and said, retweeted that and said, hey, guys, we've open sourced the code to 1995's Microsoft 3D Movie Maker and then just a link to GitHub. So now that game, I don't know if you guys have seen images from it. It's bonkers. It's like literally like a 3D movie maker. So you're placing like pre-made characters and giving them animations and text bubbles and then using that space to make a movie. It's now completely open source. And I just I love this. I love this story so much. All those weird old games that people love. And all it takes is somebody popular to just be like, hey, open source this. Let's have fun with it. And for a company to be willing and open to that. It's a real real feel-good story. We should we should mess around with this. We should. I, I was wondering, because cool. you brought this up, and I was like, why haven't I seen Foon's stuff? And so I went to his Twitter account, and I had muted him. I think probably because he was like like filling up my timeline with stuff at one point, And I was just like uh, sick of it. And I never went back. Uh, I've I, since unmuted him. Then. Even when he that? fills my... He, he's one of those posters that like loves to do images and pictures like his own images and pictures. So even when I don't read his tweets, just scrolling through my timeline, his tweet will pop up and it's like an image of like a 1992 video card that's like 14 inches long. And it's just like it's like feel good content. You know, it's just like little tummy rubs of like retro hardware. It's awesome. Tummy rub. That's awesome. I really like that. We got to mess around with that. <clears throat> um, next up here, we've got a report from one Jeff Grubb. Uh, from his uh, podcast, YouTube channel, podcast, YouTube Grub channel. Snacks. It wasn't from Grub Snacks. It was, oh, well, shit. This, this article's from a couple days ago, so he may have said something else on Grub Snacks. Um, but basically, this was uh, on their YouTube it's, channel. It's a 5 out of 10 podcast. Yeah, it's a 5 out of 10 podcast. Uh, he, he said, quote, they want you to have a Zelda thing every year. They've been holding on to this. Why wouldn't they put it out this year? And if they don't put it out this year, some other Zelda thing... Instead of just waiting for Breath of the Wild 2, I will not just understand. And what he is referring to is a one-game remaster of both Wind Waker and uh, hit Ian favorite Twilight Princess. Um, Sorry, I just... Okay, look. I have a problem with this article. This article makes it sound like it is a rumor, but I need to quote from this. Jeff Grubb, upon answering a listener question on his YouTube channel, has expressed his confidence in Nintendo releasing a double pack on Switch containing Wind Waker and Twilight Princess, emphasizing his belief that if Nintendo didn't do it this year, then it might never come to fruition. He's not saying that there's any information to this, that he has any sort of leak or that he's heard this. He's just saying that he thinks it would be a good idea for them. Oh, yeah. This is not a good article. This is not a good article. This is no, just but people make articles like, about industry, anything. No. And it's one of those most hopeful things. I'm sorry. So for the listener at home, the article is titled from Nintendo life rumor colon could switch get Zelda Wind Waker and Twilight Princess this year question mark. That makes it sound like like a rumor as in there is some source of truth that is feeding this rumor. But that is not the context of this at all. This is just an informed industry person speculating like this. I I, this this is the second time we've been screwed by some article taking a Jeff Quub. Jeff Grubb quote. Yeah. Out of context. But I, I think also like I, you can't blame them for the way Jeff Grubb words things sometimes because it's, it's can sometimes yeah. be with a wink. And a I'm, I'm not, not saying them for wanting to drive clicks to get money. <laughs> yeah. That too. <laughs> Cause it, uh, it costs money. Yeah. yeah we clicked on Nintendo life. Um, I just want to bring that up because I, I just like, I feel like I hear that all the time and like it always comes back up. So I, I basically wanted people's opinions on it, but um, yeah, it's not going to happen. Yeah. I, I, I don't think it's ever, I mean, a two pack like this year, happen. I don't think it's going to happen, but I think eventually I, it'll happen. I don't see a two pack, but the thing is these were Wii U games. Oh, he died like two decades ago. Uh, these are Wii U games. They didn't do that well on the Wii U. So you, so you might as well bring them forward. They've done that. They did that with 3D World. They've done that with other games as well. I think it's. I think this would make sense for Nintendo to do this. And in my gut, there's like a 50-50 chance that it happens. You know, yeah. I just, just don't see forward. two games in one. Uh, yeah, I don't see two games in one. I see them making you pay for both of them full price. Uh, $70. Uh, I would point you back to the Mario collection in which they made you pay $60 for three old games. 
Yeah, and they'll make you pay sixty dollars twice for two old games. <laughs> okay. <laughs> um, <laughs> next they up, get away we, with it. No, I'm not letting you get that line in. Uh, New York City sues Activision, targeting CEO Bobby Kotick. It's not loading for me. Uh, I can explain this one. So basically, this is a lawsuit by the New York City Employees Retirement System because their pension fund was heavily invested into Activision. Activision's stock tanked largely because of uh, CEO Bobby Kotick's actions. And New York City is basically suing Activision saying, hey, you did not do enough to punish Bobby Kotick. And we as stockholders think that you should have and you're accountable to us as stockholders. Um I think I think this this lays out a lot that a lot of the stockholders in Activision have have are not not big fans of the board or Bobby Kotick and how that played out and how that impacted basically their investment. Um, but I will say, uh, are you guys familiar with Richard Hogue on Twitter? Hogue Law? Hogue Law. Uh, is that Hogue Law? Yeah, he basically had a he, he's he's basically a business lawyer who mm-hmm. loves video games, so he does a lot of like legal commentary on uh, gaming news and uh his take on this was basically like this is them this is probably not going to lead anywhere but it's it's it almost feels like an obligation on their part you know Mm -hmm. like we need to go through with due diligence on this to see if we can discover anything and actually come to fruition on this but this likely won't won't lead anywhere it's very hard to for stockholders to prove that you know company manipulated it in such a way as to harm stockholders yeah i get it why we- yeah. Uh, sorry. No, I, there was a bug on top of my monitor and I was trying to crush it. Um, fuck Bobby Kodak is yeah. really all I have to say on this one. Like, pff. again, it, it sucks because it feels like nothing is ever going to touch this guy in any meaning way, meaningful yeah. way. He literally got approved to get his giant golden parachute from the a majority of the Voted stockholders, which feels. Yeah, it, it's what like like I know multiple people who work or not worked who have uh uh stock with them uh which hey good for y'all i, I hope you got in before the uh, acquisition because i'm sure that's a really nice uh yep. chunk of change there but like everyone's like yeah i voted against it but and it just seems like why why would anybody vote for it to give them more money but does it help the rest of the stockholders like do y'all get more money if they give money to bobby i feel like that can't be true no but i feel like the people who nice own easier. hundreds and hundreds of stocks probably voted yes Versus a bunch yeah. of people who own one stock voted. No. I'm sure. I'm sure. It's just like, know. ugh, fuck this guy. Yeah, it's kind of wild. Yeah. Uh, moving on here. Uh, this Hangar 13. Uh, I did not see hear about this first part. I only heard about the second part, which is there's a new mafia game in development, supposedly a prequel. Yeah. Yeah. <sighs> but what is this uh, leaving part? Uh, just that the I believe it's the uh, chief operating officer has left the studio as well as uh, you said studio head. I don't know if that's his actual title, but yeah, studio head. Hangar 13's had some weird. They've had some canceled games. They're mostly known for uh, Mafia 3, which quite frankly didn't go over that well. Um, and then Mafia Definitive Edition, which was basically just a remaster of one and two on the Mafia three engine. It's it's a bummer because I feel like Hangar 13 was propped up in the first place to be like this great studio that was going to do a bunch of cool things. And I, again, I, I, I did not play Mafia three, but everything I've heard is like story is actually pretty good, but the gameplay yeah. makes it hard to enjoy, Yeah, uh, which sounds like a nightmare. And I'm like, OK, well, I'm not going to play that. But uh it feels like Hangar 13 has kind of gotten the short end of the stick several times over. And hey, it's cool that they're making another Mafia game. I have faith that they'll probably take some of the lessons they've learned into this. But it is also like, you know, seeing people at the top leave is just kind of like, oh, OK, well, something's going on that they're not yeah. happy. Or, or or maybe they were offered a better deal. But if several of them leave at the same time, that tends to not be a good sign. So I, I don't yeah. know. Yeah. Yeah, I uh, part of me, I want to be excited by this. I really enjoy Mafia 1 and 2. I think they're really good games. They're they're kind of like Grand Theft Auto, but like set in a particular time frame and a little bit more serious. And the story writing is is better, in my opinion. Mm. 
Mafia 3, like you said, I tried to play that game. I played the first couple hours of it and the story was fantastic. But man, the gameplay just didn't feel good. It was also really buggy on launch. There, there was this one bug where, you know, in Mafia 3, it's like a GTA type game. So there was like a cutscene, and somebody's like, come on, we got to go drive over there. And you like leave the bar and you get in the car and the car goes, and it just never starts. And I had to exit the game and reload it and replay the cutscene and then get in the car. And I looked it up online. They're like, yeah, there's a bug right now where That's this really certain funny. car just doesn't start. And like the first 10 seconds, I was like, oh, this is realistic. You know, so it's the 60s. Sometimes cars don't start. And then it was like, <laughs> why? Oh, no. You got to get out and mash the A button yeah. to crank it. How did a car <laughs> not start? I know, like, and play the start noise and everything and there's just no controls it was you very had, weird you had a that's hilarious. digital car behave in a real car way and that's yeah, really accident. unnerving <laughs> i know I like that oh um, yeah so that's why like i i i want a new mafia game and the way they describe it is that this is a prequel to the original mafia one and two and that had some really good story in it i think mafia one took place in the 20s or the 30s like it's pretty old in terms of setting which is pretty cool but i don't know that i trust this studio to be honest with you and that makes me hesitant so i i'm i i'm curious to see what they'll come up with i think the property and ip has a lot of promise just not sure it's in the right hands i just i get that like making I, I I don't know. For me, I'm like, does the Mafia franchise have any relevancy or cachet with a lot of like today's audience? I've never touched a Mafia game, so I, I don't I, care. I'm going to say yes. I'm going to say okay. yes, only because it lets me talk about the show that I'm about to finish that is fantastic and is very recent and was very big. Narcos. Narcos. And Narcos Mexico, which is it's really just a gangster show. Gangster gangster movies and shows, when they're well done, will always be in favor. Let me let me pitch you this. You make a mafia game, but it's literally just Yakuza, but set, set in the United States. Yes. And the Yakuza series is huge. And Yakuza yeah. is basically Japanese it's gangster. Movie. Work. Oh, my God. I yeah. was just about to so, say all gangster media is bad, but then you had to say Yakuza. And now I can't say. I that. think you just well, haven't watched enough good ones. You haven't even watched The Sopranos. Yeah, because The Sopranos is bad. No, it's good. It's That's actually wild. really good. It's really I, good. Here's the thing: I, I haven't watched The Sopranos, so I can't act on that. Although, will I will largely agree with you. Almost every gangster movie that people tell me is good, I, I watch and I'm like, this kind of suck. Yeah, yeah, they're, yeah. There's give and take. Like Goodfellas, everybody's crazy about, and I'm like, yeah. boring, snooze yeah. fest, oh, fucking movie, departed, fucking trash. Departed, uh, honestly, trash. like. I'm going to do a hot take here. I feel like gangster TV shows are much, much better because it's they have more time. If it's good gangster. Yeah, it's more time. It's about developing the characters and those relationships. So the betrayals and the changes actually matter and are impactful. Yeah. And you, it's very hard to do that in a movie. I feel like I feel like a lot of like the gangster subplot. It, it, I feel like a lot of the gangster media is more about character study roles yeah. than it is about like action. And yeah, and exactly. Hey, this is not so well. this is not relevant. Like, yeah. I'll just say the end of Narcos Mexico season two, there is a character that Spoiler. basically dies over the course of like, like he, he has his end and his death over the last couple episodes. And it was heart wrenching because that character was so well done and had so much depth to them. And if I think back to the beginning of like Narcos Mexico's season one, like he's just a background yeah. character that's in like every other episode. But by wow. the end of season two, he has such a fantastic role and the way that goes down it's incredible. And you just can't do that in a movie. So anyways, back to your point, Zach. Fuck you. Gangster and Mafia is, if it's well done, it will always be in vogue. And it's not saturated right now, like zombies, etc. So there's room <sighs> for something fantastic here. I feel like zombies have been dead for a while. No pun intended. Uh, yeah, 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 yeah. But I think because they've just been oversaturated for the last 10, years. Let's bring back years. zombies, actually. You know what? Yeah. No. We we tried stops the zombie. Yeah, we got a remake. Anyways, <laughs> folks, so look old. forward to the Shin Godzilla TV show where they can really get to ex- explore yes! that committee ending. Uh, we're very excited about that. Um, yeah. Final bit of news here. Uh, our prayer worked, Ian. It did. 
We prayed to uh, Jeff Keighley, and he has answered. We prayed to Jeff Keighley, and he has answered. Summer Game Fest, June 9th. Mark your calendars. I'll be working, uh, but I hope everyone enjoys it. Oh, yeah. Keighley. I, look, can I, I don't know if you guys know when June 9th is. If you had to guess what Very day soon. of the week. What so day Thursday. of the week is June 9th? It's Thursday. I looked it Thursday up. Thursday at 2 p.m. Eastern. What are yep. you doing, Jeff Keighley? What are you doing? And Microsoft oh. is Sunday. That Woo! makes sense. That makes sense. Yeah. Um, that is a good point. Shit, I don't know how many save data people are going to be free to be on that stream with me. Fuck. It's like it's like bad day and bad time. It's 2 p.m. Eastern. I, yeah. I can't. I, I don't. I think I'm going to be so busy at work at that time that I can't even watch it off to the side See, live. I, I, and the other thing is, like, you might be like, oh, Will, you're getting paid to watch it. I'm going to be so busy cutting and flipping all of those trailers. Yeah, I don't get to no. watch it either. <laughs> Like yeah, I do gonna, rewatch you're, you're the miserable. game awards after it happened because I didn't see half Ugh. the trailers or half one, the awards. Uh, w- Nobody saw half the awards. <laughs> uh, one one cool thing we haven't talked about in this yet is uh, the whole IMAX integration. Oh right, they're going for which actually God. I'm pretty Not, hyped. That's kind of cool. I would I would go watch this if I didn't create content about video games. Or I think you're your forgetting life. though that Keeley cannot put on. A good show. This the Summer Game Fest is basically the Game Awards where it's 99% like commercials and then there's 10% of ads and then there's maybe 1 or 2% of actual good worthwhile content in it. And I don't want to sit in a movie theater for 3 or 4 hours having to watch that as opposed to having it off to the side while I'm doing other things if I'm watching it. Yeah, and it's Summer Games Fest. The whole thing is a presentation of different games and ads that are coming out later. I don't think he's a good curator, though. I feel like he lets too much stuff by that is, like, mediocre and <gasps> shouldn't really be on that stage. What's Kojima bringing? That's true. That's true. Oh, uh, we, we, we yeah. actually, there's actually a really good chance that we hear about his next project. Yeah, we'll have uh, to make a podcast about that. There was that. something about Kojima. Yeah, there was something. <laughs> if only there, like there was used, one. There was, wasn't there a podcast? Oh, uh, I hear this. Like, I hear this all the time. Hey, hey. Do a new episode! God damn it! <laughs> I'll do a new yeah, episode. Really- it's this guy who doesn't answer my messages. That's not fucking wow. true. Yeah, it's not true at all, actually. We'll do another episode. <laughs> I promise. If there's Kojima news, the next Kojima news, hold me to this. I will. There's Kojima I will, news we'll like do an gives a lot. Oh, it's over. It's dead. Wow. We, we're not catching Kojima. Wow. Wow. with Pirates of the Caribbean. It's dead. Yeah, it's dead. <laughs> Pirates of the Caribbean podcast. That's a good one. Pirates of the Kojima Bean. Potsy cast? <laughs> This sucks. That's a, that's a terrible name. Hey, it's cool. cast. Um, Pot but, cast. Um, that's going to be the show. That was the news. Wow. Um, I'm excited I'm, for this. Cool, Jeff Keighley. Yay. No, we're ending the podcast. <laughs> Folks, thank you so much for tuning in. Um, this is the show. Everyone who watched, we had at least nine watchers at one point david thank you for being here the whole time uh folks uh you can find all of our content subpixelfilms.com or you straight to our youtube channel subpixel team on twitter instagram facebook and tiktok ian gibson you can find him on Hi. twitter at think gibson zach from save data what do you want to plug plug it baby uh, you can go to SaveDataTeam.com or YouTube.com slash SaveDataTeam or Twitter.com slash SaveDataTeam or Twitch.tv slash SaveDataTeam. Oh, Any Slave of those, Leia that'll team. take you to our stuff. Slave Leia Team, yep. Huge bout, Slave <laughs> Leia. Uh, <laughs> Job of the Hut, best character <laughs> for <laughs> getting her in that outfit. Uh, Did you say Slave Labor Team? I thought slave you said Slave Leia. Leia. Not slave labor. What's wrong with you? The original idol game, Ian. <laughs> my handle. Is, right. <laughs> slave labor, the original idol game. Yeah. Oh, this <laughs> oh no, no, Will. No, you can't do that. Oh, Jesus Christ. No. Oh God. <laughs> Um, um, anyways, you check out the their content. They do the work for you, and um, then you come. Back. Yeah, and you come back and check in on it. They have you click uh, a couple times. They have streams that they won't let me be on. So go tune into those and enjoy them. Um, until then, subpixelfilms.com. Join the Discord. We're having fun. We'll see you all next week. This is a mistake. Huge mistake.